welcome back to uh, Ubuntu BSD Unix Tile. This is the show all about Linux. Uh, we hope to offer something really different than uh, what's, uh, what's been going on out there. Uh, basically, the Unix environment and the Linux environment should be, if it's open source, it should be that while you do have fanfare going on, it should be remembered that the Linux desktop, that environment is designed to be open. And that means that you can mix and match, you can readjust, and basically you don't have to be a fan of anybody. You, know, you don't have to be fanatic about things. You don't have to lock yourself to one platform. You can sort of choose what you want and you can really design an environment the way you need to design that environment. In other words, uh, Linux is for those people who are so inclined they want to design their own uh, and now it's, it's gone past computing environment. It, it is a general computer, uh, but when you call when you include laptops, net netbooks, uh, tablets, uh, file servers, uh, so on and so forth, into this uh, mix, and now even TVs, uh, you've gone beyond the simple computing environment uh, into a much larger, uh, uh, really integrated environment. Uh, that all I can do is call it as a systems environment. That's, as, that's as, as defined as it gets. Beyond that, with Linux, what that systems environment is, is up to you. And this has sort of been a concept that anyone who's on Linux un really kind of understands this. Uh, that you can uh, sort of uh, have things your own way. You don't have to, to be uh, locked into one specific area. But there are those who always have that MS type of mind, or a commercial word type of mindset, where they try to lock people into particular platforms. These people are trying to sort of force change on the Linux computer, on the open source community. And then there's those who truly, well, give them fault are fans. They're, they're fanboys and fangirls of a particular platform. Some people like Ubuntu's uh, uh, GNOME platform. Some people are into the Unity platform and they defend it staunchly. Other people are KDE people. Other people are X people. Uh, there are a whole bunch of different varieties out there of different type of people. Uh, uh, and then there are those out there who don't have any particular environment and are feel free to, well, okay, I like, the, like I'm going to give you an example. I'm that person myself. I'm a KDE person. But I don't like everything about KDE. I'm not going to go and say, ah, everything KDE. Well, because my desktop isn't purely KDE. It, it, it starts off in KDE. It, its initial presentation is KDE. But a number of the functionality, like I hate uh, the, the uh, Aperture, the uh, Muon, uh, package manager. You, that package manager crashes at critical points in time and doesn't give you fallback to the terminal. You can, if you're in Muon and you're upgrading your system and it goes through a critical crash and it does this, it crashes the entire system and doesn't allow you to fall back to terminal. Where if you're an app, an, an apt get or, or, or uh, apt or anything like that, and this is what Synapse, Synaptic does uh, if it's, as a pack, package manager on GNOME, it allows you to fall back to terminal. So if something goes wrong, it doesn't have to wipe out your entire system. You can recover a crash. And it's only a section that crashes, not the whole thing that crashes. But with Muon, the whole thing crashes. It goes out completely. So what I did is instead of just simply going with KDE, uh, I figured out a way to uh, use uh, uh, the Linux environment to build a hybrid desktop. So I have a KDE GNOME desktop. So my desktop is not purely KDE, it's a cross between KDE and GNOME. And now the next choice that I've made is I got a tablet and I said, well, let's see if the, if the tablet is Linux, if Android is Linux, uh, then you should be able to port and integrate Android on, onto the Linux desktop. And that's what I've been sort of working on. Uh, but I said, other people don't, I, 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 they're more fanboys and fangirls. And I said, my thing is, I'm staying open. Uh, I'm not going to champion any particular product or anything like that. Uh, because you need that critical so, sort, of, sort of overview. 
And if you're a developer, you can watch the show because uh, the first thing we go into things, not we don't go into coding de into detail. The first and most important part to any software, any application, is the user interface. And that means, one, is it usable? Two, how good is the user interface? And where does it fall short? If you can't answer these three things, then your software, no matter how good it is in the background, in terms of how good you are in your coding, doesn't move forward. It falls flat on its face because people can't use your product. And I see so much of this on Android. Android has so many, so much good potential, but what happens is that because they're focusing on adware, they forget the open source uh, sort of code. And that you want to make it usable for everybody. And it's not about necessarily making money. Yeah, you can make money on it, but it's not about the money. It's not about uh, the commercial aspect. It's about bringing a top quality product, a very user-friendly product, to the person. And the thing is, is I'm a person, I'm trying to build, uh, move, uh, some, do, move my desktop experience onto the Android tablet. Was I able to do it? Yes, I was able to do it. Why? Because I understand Linux. I understand how to, to hack and work, do, to do workarounds. And I found that more, all, not most, all the apps I have on my desk, uh, on the Android tablet, don't do everything that the desktop does. And as a matter of fact, if you go by the, the apps by themselves, uh, and just go by the app functions alone, what ends up happening is you ended up, end up with a very limited system. And it's a very poor showing of the function and the capability, the functionality and the capability of Linux itself. However, if you understand Linux and you understand that there are workarounds to pick particular bugs and problems, then you understand that you can now sit down, take a couple months, and it doesn't take a couple months, to sit down and work out the kinks, work out the bugs bit by bit, and get a fully functional desktop working on the Android. And that's exactly what I've done. I've got a fully functional desktop working on the Android. I can take my Android, and that's what I'm doing, take my Android out on a research expedition. Rather than taking the laptop with me, I'm taking my Android. So no longer a big laptop. I've got everything, including my books, everything, and editing software, video editing software, on the Android. And that's all I really need. And no longer do I have to carry large, large books. I don't have to carry, you know, the amount that I stuff that I actually have to bring on a research expedition has, has shrunk extremely. And that's because of the Android talent. And, and if you have a Linux understanding that you can do these workarounds, you can create a Linux desktop experience on the Android. It's been done with the current existing software. However, the current existing software, as I said, is lacking. The more of the uh, the uh, Linux experience really needs to be brought to the desktop, brought to Android, I should say, and that's what sort of really will, will bring it uh, into a Linux, a real Linux environment, real quality Linux environment, where people say walk around with with their tablets and say, I have. saying we've got some uh, real problems with uh, with MS now creeping into the open source environment and for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about uh, if you have been a fan of Skype and you're on Android or Linux then you know what I'm talking about uh, in the recent last two months there's been a major change in Skype and people started noticing this and I began having a problem the first Skype on the desktop, on Linux desktop, where I began having security problems. So I put on a um, packet sniffer and began sniffing around to see what was going on. What I find out, what I found out was all of a sudden on the network, I start seeing an appearance of a Microsoft Internet, Brow Internet Explorer browser. I said, but I'm not running Internet Explorer browser. Where is this? Into, you know, who is this browser? And it was giving me IDs, you know, in, in uh, IP numbers that were and MAC addresses that were on my network. You know, so, but I don't have that anywhere. And I didn't really figure out what it was, but I realized that as I shut down Skype and to deal with the security problem, that, that as soon as I shut down Skype, the security problems began disappearing. I notified Microsoft about this, but I got a, hmm, 
a lukewarm response about this and you know oh yes we're concerned about that blah 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 you know and eventually maybe about a month later two months later they came up with an update but by that time because it was two months late two months later when they came up with their update to, and they finally admitted that there was a security problem. Uh, I had moved everything on Android. I, moved, I had moved Skype completely onto Android and it was no longer on the network. Yet when a packet sniffer showed up, when I did my packet sniffing again to see if uh, the issues were still showing up, the security issues, yes, lo and behold, there was a uh, Internet Explorer browser. Where was it? Not on my network anymore, particularly in terms of the desktop. It was on the Android. Uh, it came up the Android uh, Mac address, came up the uh, uh, Android IP address. And it wasn't until just about a couple days ago uh, that, uh, that Android Skype updated and lo and behold, what do you see? A completely revamped MS environment Skype. And what I mean by that, at first it doesn't, doesn't see MSN anywhere, but it tells you that you can, it is a sort of, you could sort of see this coming, that you can log in with your existing MSN account. So what happened with this update? The ability to block people is gone. And this include callers and, uh, what you call it, uh, People with other Skype ID, in other words, blocking users from from accessing you. It leaves you completely open. Uh, a large chunk of the buttons were missing. And when you uh, when you uh, want to see who somebody was, it was someone's profile. Is rather than going into your Firefox browser, it went into its own Internet Explorer browser. So. After watching the uh, uh, calls being dropped, after watching uh, the, the uh, Android comments to see what was going on in terms of uh, on Android Skype, the problems that people were having, everybody, well, I would say 95% of the people who were commenting were commenting something negative, and it was really bad. So I went and said, okay, let's see what's going on Skype. To see, to see is there any way to block calls? Because I got this mysterious call from somebody. I don't know who it was. Uh, to see if I could block them, because the call block, to be able to block a person even by the phone number was there in the previous version. It, it's not there anymore. So I went on to Skype to see what I could find out about blocking people f uh, on Android. No help on Android. There's no help for Android at all. They recommend that you go to the community, the Skype community. That's where you get the answers from. So I went to the Skype community. Went to the Android section of the Skype community. And I say, okay, what's going on here? Read the list, scroll down the list. Skype is now crap. Skype 4.0 for Android is crap. Crap, crap, crap. How do you do this? Where has this gone? Why isn't this working? Drop calls, bad interface, uh, heavy, heavy, heavy data use, uh, hogs resources, drains battery, and it sounds like MSN all over again. So, uh, really, is MSN has really gone that bad is really taken over. So I, what I did, I usually said, okay, well, maybe this is something that's specific to Android. So let me back out of the Android community and see what other communities there are. And so I scrolled down the main list for, for, for Skype community, and what did I see down there at the bottom? MSN now rolled into Skype 4.0. And then it hit me. That's where I realized what Microsoft had done in 4.0 was complete change Skype and made Skype into and so right now Skype is MSN with a with a Skype name. On. MSN was so bad, no one wanted MSN. Everyone ran from that, that that platform. So rather than fixing the platform up and making it better, they took a good platform like Skype, cramped it up, and and, and made it MSN and just sort of kept the name. So basically. Instead of having MSN as the name of the network, it's now Skype. So MSN is now Skype. That's where the problem is. And it has embedded as its browser as part of Skype now, Internet Explorer. So if you're if you're trying to get away from Internet Explorer, if you're a person trying to get away from Internet Explorer, you've done all the security work, you've, 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 you've secured your network, 
you've moved off of uh, internet, you've moved away from, uh, uh, from Internet Explorer, you've moved away from Microsoft browsers, and if you have Skype on your desktop, guess what? Or on your Android, you've now got Internet Explorer and all its security holes back on your desktop again. That's what's happened. There is the, the, the problem, there. and the thing is, Microsoft is not going to fix it because they can't fix it. They've never fixed it. It doesn't matter what version of Internet Explorer has come out. It's, already, it's, always, been an MS, it's always been MS Craftware. Heavy, bloated, uh, resource hogging, and filled with security holes. They spent more time hobbling their, 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 uh, their software in order to sell it out in tiers than they do making a good quality piece of software. And unfortunately, this is what's happened to Skype now. And this needs to be a call to everyone out in the open source community that Skype needs to be replaced. There needs to be a good effort on an open source version of, of Skype. Skype needs to be brought back to open source. So this is the call up there. I hope you like uh, this new edition of uh, uh, Unix, uh, Ubuntu BSD Unix the town. And I will see you next week for the next episode of uh, for the next episode. All right, take it easy. Everybody, I know I said goodbye on uh, on uh, Ubuntu BSD Unix the town, but there is important pressing news. So there is addendum to the. Uh, uh, episode uh, is an important one, and it has to do with uh, Android and uh, Linux. Anyone who's on the um, the uh, Mac, Linux, Android platforms, this is important for you to, to understand, to, uh, to know that. And this is about Skype, the direction that Skype is taking. Microsoft, when it took over Skype, said that it wouldn't uh, fiddle with Skype, but leave it alone and keep it as a Skype product. And most users who were on Linux, Mac, and Android were kind of skeptical about this, but they trusted them anyways. And until recently, they really haven't done any. They hadn't done anything to the platform. Well, as of four days ago, we see uh, on let's see here, Znet. Uh, com. What else is there? Gizmodo. And another one called Make Yourself. There's three different websites. They're not. They're all pretty, pretty typical. The blog is coming out there. This is about about four days ago. And it says here it's all about Skype 4.0 for Android. And this is if for those of you who know, Linux has also upgraded its Android to, to a 4. Point, you know, to, to its 4.2. Uh, it's now into the higher ones, and you'll notice a huge change. What's the change? The change is that the uh, if you go down and look to see what's going on, these people, the, the, these uh, what I call these, I wouldn't, I would never pay for any of these uh, sites called Make Use of uh, Gizmodo or Znet. You've got to really take be careful when you when you're reading these sites. Uh, a lot of these uh, uh, articles are paid for by by Skype. They're promotions and not actually articles doing an in-depth review of it. And they give you a glossy overview of, woo, isn't this great? Well, Skype 4.0 isn't great. It looks great. It looks like it could be a good product. You know, the advertising is very slick, but it's typical MS product. It's all hype and nothing behind it. They actually removed more than 50% of the functionality of the old, take the old Skype product, right, before 4.0 on Android. That's the old stuff. Here's a new one. What they do? They improve the unit. They, they somewhat improve the user, user interface. If you like what they've done with it, it's not as functional. It looks it looks prettier, but in terms of functionality, it's not as functional as the old one. And what do they do? They removed 50% of the functionality. So here's the old one. Here's the new one. Old one functional. You can do almost anything. You can use it on a daily basis uh, to have your phone number on. You can use it as an office phone number because you can you can you can connect it to a pot surface. They are uh, and a pot is your plain old telephone service, uh, uh, plain old television, the plain old telephone system. That's your that's your regular telephone. You can actually connect it to it. You can actually con and use it as a mobile mobile phone device. And if you're so inclined, because your device is working well enough, you got your device working, you can have your office number on it. On it. Not a problem on the old system. Problem on the new one. Can't do that. 
because the system is so so dysfunctional, so unstable that you don't know whether someone's trying to contact you, uh, uh, contact you or not. If someone calls in, more often than not, they're going to get your voicemail. They're not going to come right through unless and, and unless you have your voicemail e email to your device, you're not going to know whether you got that voicemail or not. And this this is some of the problems. The other problems are is that what really happens. Now you have a security problem because why? They not only rolled MSN into 4.0, Skype 4.0, which is not so like, 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 just let like, just let's make this clear. Skype 4.0, the new Skype now over the last four days. If you've been watching this, what's going on? It's not Skype anymore. It's MSN. They've dumped the Skype product, simply put and, and snuck in. It's so take the Skype skin. Take out all the functionality of Skype and put in MSN. So basically, you really have MSN back there. They simply have Skype as the mask. So Skype is the mask. MSN is the real product. They brought in with MSN Internet Explorer. Wanted to get away from Internet Explorer on your computer uh, if you're a Mac user and you're a uh, uh, Linux user? No, you're not going to do that because as soon as you install Skype on there, guess what? You've got Internet Explorer as a browser now. It's there on your system. Same thing with Android. You've now got Internet Explorer on there. With all the security holes. This is a horrible upgrade. And you ask, you, in the last five days, people have been on Skype now complaining their heads off. There are pages of complaints. There's nothing but complaints on there. Every time you see someone say, oh, oh great, uh, great job, you wonder if Microsoft is paying these guys to go in there because everybody else is pissed off at it. And the thing is, you haven't had one response from any of the moderators on the, on the Skype community group. You haven't had any response from uh, Skype or Microsoft itself. It's typical Microsoft behavior. They, they, they look like they're selling a good product, they, they're very slick in their advertising, but once you get it on your, on your server, on, 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 in your hands, and you actually start to try to use it, it's absolute crap. So, let's just put it this way now. At this point in time, I'm going to slap a label on all MSWare. MSWare basically equals crapware. Every time you see me use, use the word crapware, that's MSWare. They're the same thing. So if you want to be ripped off, you know, Skype is the way to go. Skype is now MSN. Uh, unfortunately, you know, I, I, I had gone down that route. I, I personally said, hey, you know, Skype, they hadn't, they, hadn't, they hadn't done anything to it. Skype was a good product. I was using it on a daily basis. I have a yearly subscription to Skype with a telephone number and everything on it. It's crap now. I can only use it periodically. I can't use it when I'm if I'm on, if I'm my Android on my Android. I can't use it with Firefox. If Firefox is, is up, Skype crashes. If Fire if Facebook is off is, is on, Skype crashes. If I'm going into uh, Google Plus, right on on the Android, Skype crashes. It doesn't work with any other app on there. It wants to be the only app operating on your tablet or your phone. So, as I said, this is a warning here. I'm going to put this in the label here. A big, big warning that Skype is now MSN. All right. Take it easy. <laughs> Sorry about that. Bye-bye. Professor. And professor of what? Professor of physics.